Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at return values. And that's because functions can not only perform actions, which is what the calculate mpg function does here. It processes some data and then prints something out. They can also take some inputs and give us some outputs. What that allows us to do is to extract some of this code into a separate function so that they don't get too long. This calculate mpg function at the moment does a bit more than just calculate mpgs. It calculates mpgs and then it also calculates the car name and finally it prints it out. So there are a few things going on in this function and that's usually something that tells you that you can have multiple functions instead of just one. A few things are going on, you can have one function for each thing. Let's make our calculate mpg function actually only calculate mpgs. What we'll do is after the calculation, we will just do return mpg. This is how you can return values. And what that means is whenever this function gets called, you can then assign that to a variable. For example, we could do something like this. And then the value of dividing the mileage by the fuel consumed, which is a float, will be assigned to the mpg variable via this return. We'll have 50.0, let's say as an example, we will return 50.0, and then we will assign 50.0 to mpg. Now, because that's happening, as soon as Python encounters a return statement, the function ends, and none of the other code evaluates. So, what we've done here is we've made our calculate mpg function actually only calculate mpgs. Now we need another function to do the rest of the stuff. So I'll define a function called car name, and it will also take a car and it will just calculate the name and then it will return it. Finally, I'll make a function called print car info, which will take a car as well. And it will use these two functions to get the car name and to get the car's MPG. Finally, it will print it out. Notice that this function here does not have a return. So when we run this function, if we were to assign it to a variable like this, this variable would be equal to the special value none in Python. None just means no value. So all functions in Python return the value none by default, or you can of course just do return none if you wanna make that explicit none has a capital N, and again, it just means no value. What we've done here is we now have three functions. So I appreciate this is a little bit more complicated than it was before. We've got a function that calculates the miles per gallon, and it accepts a parameter, which should be some data, which has to be a dictionary, since we are accessing a dictionary's properties. And this car data has to contain a property mileage and a property fuel consumed then it's going to divide one by the other and it's going to return that value. In the function print car info, which also takes a variable car as a parameter, which should be a dictionary with this structure, it then passes the value of that variable to the car name function and to the calculate mpg functions. Let's take the calculate mpg function as an example for this flow. We will receive the car information in the print car info function. Then it gets passed over the same value to the calculate mpg function, which uses the properties to calculate something. This return value then gets assigned back to the mpg variable inside print car info. So you can see how Python is jumping around. As soon as it encounters a function, it goes and runs the function code. If there's a return, then we can assign that to a variable. So running this function here is exactly the same as just copying this code and putting it there. However, because it has a name such as car name, it's a little bit easier to read when you're looking at this function to understand what it does. Clearly this function first gets the car name or calculates it in some way, then it gets the car's MPG and it calculates it in some way and finally prints some information out. And you don't necessarily have to go and look at these other functions as long as you believe that it calculates the name and the MPG correctly. 
But you can do if you want in order to understand how the name and the MPG are calculated. Notice that here at the end, we have now uh, got mpg equal print car info, but this print car info function does not return anything, or rather it returns none by default. So this is kind of useless, so we can just remove it. We can just call print car info, and that is going to run through this code here and print the information by using these other functions. I'll also say that it's good form in Python and generally recommend it to leave two lines between each function definition so you can read through it a little bit quicker. Now this code is getting a little bit longer, but we can still run it and it will print out the same thing as before. Something that my students frequently do is a small mistake, which is to print this function here. If you say print of print car info, what you're doing is you are passing the result of calling print car info to the print function, which is then going to print this value out. The value that will get printed out is the return value of the function. But because this function returns none, what you'll see here is none printed out. So you still get all of this stuff from our previous functions, but now you get none in between each function as well. This is normally not what you want, so just don't print the result of calling that function. You can just call the function and let it print. If you want it to print here, you can make this return. And then this function will now actually return this string, which then you can print out. If you don't print it out, you won't see anything output in the console because we haven't printed anything out. We've just got some values. If you want to show them, you have to print it out. So if you make the function return something, you can then use that value. If you make the function print, like we had earlier, then you don't have to use that value. Functions can return multiple times. And what that means is, let's say that you've got a divide function that takes two numbers and divides one by the other. But you want to make sure that you can't divide a number by zero because that's illegal in mathematics. You can say if y is equal to zero, then you can return you try to divide by zero. But otherwise, we can return x divided by y. This works in exactly the same way that all if statements do, which is that if y is zero, then this code runs. But if y is not zero, then this code runs and this one does not. Both of them will cause the termination of the function and the value to be given back to the caller, but only one of them will ever run in one function call. So you can have multiple return statements as long as they won't both try to run. So if you have this instead, this if statement will never run because when this one runs, the function terminates. So having two return statements, one after the other, is not very useful because only the first one would ever run. So if you put them in an if statement, that's better. Either one will run, but both can run given the right circumstances. So if we print the divide of 10 and 2, you'll see that you get 5.0. But if you print the divide of 6 and 0, then you'll see the string gets printed out. You try to divide by 0. Once again, just to reiterate, if you call these functions but you don't print, nothing will get printed out because these functions calculate a value and give it back to the caller so that you can put it in a variable or do something with it. But you still have to print it out if you actually want to show it to the user. That's it for this video. I wanted to tell you about return values for functions because they really start allowing you to split out your code and move it from one place to another, putting it into functions so that you can reuse them in other parts of your code. As you learn more Python, you will increasingly put code into different functions so that you can use them in multiple places. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've learned something and I'll see you in the next video.